there and welcome to another episode of 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. If you've been following this challenge in the previous days, you might have wondered, Anais, where are new videos? Did you give up on the challenge? And no, I can reassure you, I did not give up on the challenge. I simply have a lot on my plate right now and it's summer and I'd like to enjoy my free time as well. And since I'm not getting paid, to do these videos on my YouTube channel anymore <laughs> in my new role. I do them literally in my free time on weekends and I, I like to enjoy my weekends sometimes as well. <laughs> so I can reassure you I'm trying to put out new videos. They might be less edited on more of a draft kind of, of raw material. Uh, I hope you still enjoy them. I hope they are still useful. Now, what is this video about today? Day 40, 41 of 100 Days of Kubernetes. I did a live stream with some amazing people from Sivo, the company that I work at, and, and some others. And one of the things that came up during the live stream was a term, the term shifting left. Now, if you've been in the DevOps space for some time, you might have come across it before, shifting left. What does it mean? If you just hear we have to shift left, teams have to shift left, does this mean you just get up when you get on the next chair on your left? No, <laughs> of course not. That's not what it means, right? Don't be silly, Anais. But what does it actually mean, shifting left? So that's what we're going to look at today. So I did some research and I can show you here the research. Let's let's skip over to it. So this is my personal notion page and you can find the link to this specific page where I put all my notes down below. So I basically thought during the live stream, I've never actually looked at that term itself. Like I've, I mean, I kind of know or knew what it meant, just having heard it several times from different people, but I have not actually looked into it and researched it. So I just Googled shifting left and then I read the first pages that came up and found some really nice drawings and was able to connect it to some of the things I previously learned. So shifting left in itself um, it basically means that we test earlier and we test really often. So it's a term related to testing, test driven development. Now test driven development basically means that as part of your development process of the development lifecycle, when you're developing an application at each stage, you test it or even before you actually develop anything, you develop the tests that specify how the application, how the feature is supposed to function. So you have first, you have the test that specifies something, um, basically what is supposed to happen, what is it supposed to do, what is the application supposed to do, right? So for example, in an input field, you're supposed to provide the name. Now think about all the different things that are not a name, right? And the test should specify that those things should not be possible to put into the input field by a user. So once you have to test, you can then develop the application. So you can basically develop the feature or the application. And once you have the feature or the part of the application that you want to develop, you can then ensure that it fulfills the tests, right? So instead of developing the feature first and then developing the test, and a lot of times maybe you even delete tests because some of the test cases didn't run, <laughs> and you still you just delete it so it doesn't throw any error that's obviously really bad you do not want to do that right so instead you develop the test first and you think of it's different test cases and then according to those you develop then the feature or the application the part that you want to develop now that's that's basically test of development in itself now what is shifting left so to understand shifting left we have to look at uh, the this traditional waterfall model waterfall approach that I have outlined here. So in the waterfall approach, and that was really popular with early software application development, that that was the process that teams went through when they were developing a new application. So at the beginning, they would, for example, sit down with their different stakeholders 
And then we think about the requirements. What are actually the requirements of my application? What does my application actually have to fulfill? Now, once we have the requirements, we can then move on to the design process and we can design the architecture of the application. So if it requires a database, we outline how the database fits into our application, how application is supposed to behave. That's maybe we also wireframes and the design process comes in actually of what is the website, what is the application, the user flow supposed to look like. And then in the implementation, you then develop the application, you basically everything from the requirements and the design you put into place into your code. And then you verify that it's actually working, that the application is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. And then you move on to maintenance where you have lots of legacy code where you find bugs from your testing. Now, the problem is if this is where you start the testing, right? It's a lot more expensive than if you start the testing right at the beginning, right? Now there are different drawings of the waterfall approach that you can find online. So if you Google waterfall application development design process or something like that, you will find these kind of drawings. So you can see how that looks like. Now with shifting left, we basically say we want to, instead of just testing at the end of be, basically right before the release of our <laughs> application, uh, we it's going to be a lot more expensive to fix bugs. It can be like a thousand times more expensive to fix bugs because in some cases those bugs are ingrained in the architecture of your application, in the, what you have done in the requirements and the design. So what you want to do instead is actually test everything right at the beginning. Now, Agile was more or less became popular in 2010, something like that. That's what I've heard. <laughs> and I'm not that old. So I, I've, I've been playing in the mud then. So anyway, it's <laughs> a different story. I've not been playing in the mud, but basically I'm saying I'm young and I don't know when exactly Agile came in because I literally just, it has been part of my education of what Agile is in management school and stuff. And um, in my first internship, so Agile is not for me a sell worthy thing anymore. So if you're a recruiter and you're trying to reach out to me, agile teams don't sell very well. <laughs> it's, it's kind of something that's supposed to be by default. Anyway, so with agile, what you do instead, instead of having this huge, like this is not a sprint. And a sprint is basically a time frame where you want to achieve a certain outcome and certain processes have to lead to this outcome. Now, in this case, uh, this might be taking several months or years, this waterfall approach. And in Agile, what you do instead, you break this down into smaller chunks. So instead of having this huge application developed at once, this is the application, you divide up what part of the application you can develop within certain time frames. So you have to see what has to actually de be developed first. And then you break those up into sprints, okay? And a sprint is basically where a bunch of people who are developing the application or who are part involved of the application come together and they, they develop that part. And that's basically a sprint. And we can go into Agile in another video. What it actually entails, there are lots of different methodologies around Agile and how to improve it and, um, and Scrum and all this kind of stuff all around it. But that's basically what you have to remember for this. Now, by breaking down the application, like by not developing the application all at once and then testing at the end, but actually breaking it up into sprints, we can then test at every part of here. Like testing can be cut a part of this. Testing, test, testing. So <laughs> let's make this a bit smaller and put it here. And then we might have a bunch of other parts of it. We have a design, we have other things that happen and we have the testing within each sprint. Right? And that allows us for each feature during the development to actually find bugs, find things that are happening. So why is it called shifting left? Well, this graphic here, I, I put it in because it expands it really, really well. Shifting left just, it comes from language. When we read in many languages, <laughs> we read from the left, well, here's your left, I think, to the right, right? For me, it's the other around. So we read from the left to the right. And, or is it, no, this left? Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, the camera records it the other way around. So we read from the left side to the right side. 
And so what we read on the left side, any sentence, any words that we read on the left side, they come first, that are first presented to us, so we will consume them first. Versus anything that's on the right side, we will consume later, right? It's just the time frame of when we read, right? Um, so if you have a really long board, that's what you're going to read first and that's what you're going to read later. So shifting left just means we test early on. Now, why is it important for DevOps? So when you are within DevOps, <laughs> you will hear different terms uh, related to shifting left. So you can, for example, say shifting left security, shifting left, uh, I don't know, can you say it about deployments? Anyway, anything, you can put basically anything related to shifting left, anything that you want to have as early as possible within the software development process. And that could be security, it should be security, <laughs> and that could be also anything else. Now, the term traditionally comes from testing and test-driven development, but in DevOps, we also apply it to other terms. So when you hear shifting left, it just basically means that whatever they talk about, it's something that they want to do as early as possible right at the beginning. And that's what shifting left means. Now, there are different and that's all in the Notion page link below, and I will provide more information. There are different ways of shifting left. So when we have our traditional, um, this is traditional shifting left, when we have our traditional waterfall approach, which is at each stage of the waterfall approach, we test. Then there's another one, which is increment shifting, shift test, left, shift left testing, incremented shift left testing. And what that means, I think it, this is really fascinating, right? So you break down the overall waterfall approach into a few smaller chunks, right? So instead of develop, so you, for example, have testing for the back end for the, and for the front end separately as part of the waterfall model, right? And then you test at each stage. So you have a bit more testing involved. Now, Agile DevOps shift left testing is basically what I mentioned that each sprint, you have testing at each stage of that sprint. So you want to have in this approach, you want to have not only one person responsible for testing or one team responsible for testing. Like, yes, there should be people involved whose main responsibility is testing <laughs> and testing the application, testing features. But overall, you want everybody to be able, you want to have your developers, your engineers be able to create tests before they get started. Right. And then we have model based shift left testing. And in this case, the testing becomes part of the design process. And this is the most complicated one. And if you're interested, look into those details. It's basically that you break it up even further and you really design the testing as, as part of the application development process. Now, there are some more sources. I will add more videos, such as also this one. Uh, so you can check that out. You can check out the sources that I used. It's basically to have another analogy. When you are building a bridge, right? How can I, right? We want to build this bridge over the river and the river goes through here. And this is basically our bridge. Anyway, so when you're developing a bridge, you have to fulfill certain requirements, right? You have to ensure that everything is uh, taking into account how, what is the rate of the cars or the people and everything that's crossing the bridge, how fast is the stream, the stream or the river underneath the bridge, what is the bridge going to be used for, what are the weather conditions, uh, what is the material and so on. So you will have to take all of that into account. Now the problem is if you do not calculate some aspects correctly, the bridge might not work for its intended purpose later on. And once you have actually developed a bridge, you can hardly fix it. Fixing a bridge once it's built and put over the river is really, really expensive. So think about it that way. When you're testing, when you're doing anything within your software development process, your software development life cycle, everything that you do too late in the process and that requires you to rewrite lots of lots of parts of your application or dependencies, that's um, not good. <laughs> and within shift left security, let's say, when we want to have security implemented early on, that allows us to test for vulnerabilities, that allows us to ensure that we don't, we're not having any dependencies that might introduce vul in vulnerabilities to our application. So there are several different benefits of shift left testing. When you are developing an application, there's usually a project planner, somebody who's responsible for the timeline on which features are going to be implemented 
by when the application or feature should be available. Now, if you are ensuring that there are no bugs, nothing has to be fixed later on, is introduced during the development process, that allows you to have better time estimates, but also better budget estimates for the long run for those project managers. So you can become a lot more reliable for those other team members and their responsibilities if you are following these kind of processes. And then also the code is overall usually tends to be better developed and is easier to maintain. Basically, you develop good code from the beginning instead of writing quick code and then trying to fix whatever is fixable later on, kind of like patches. Like you can't just put tape over stuff, right? Later on, it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> and yeah, you have basically higher respect. You show higher respect to users because you're not just putting something out there that people have to use. And the debugging process is also easier throughout developing the application, throughout the development lifecycle, instead of you doing it at the end, because you actually know what are the different dependencies, how your application is actually working. Now, the thing is, if you only test at the end, right, then you might have throughout the entire process introduced different bugs or faulty design processes and decisions. And if that's the case, then some bugs might be dependent on other bugs and so you have to fix the other bugs first before you can actually fix the bug that you want to fix and you don't want to be in that position because it's a really nasty position to be in and it's time consuming and nerve-wracking so i suggest you not to do that so this is basically an overview of shifting left and i've looked into that after i heard the term i suggest you whenever you are watching a live stream a meetup just check it out or if you hear something new just try reading about it. And that's usually how I learn something. I just listen to some people talk about interesting things and then I look them up. <laughs> now, I hope this was useful. If you would like to see similar content or more application development, cloud native application development, then please give me a comments below on what kind of topics you would like to see videos on. These are just basically things that I've been looking at. Maybe there are other things that would be interesting for you. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can implement shifting left security with Sneak. So we're going to take a look at Sneak and introduction to Sneak and how you can get started using it. So stay tuned for the next video. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter. At least it's going back to on a weekly basis. So I highly suggest you to subscribe to that. I share free online learning resources from across the DevOps space from amazing people such as yourself right to your inbox on a weekly basis. So subscribe to that. Now, if this video was useful, please do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.